welcome back to the past is alive this video is going to be behind the scenes of my toy room slash YouTube studio slash baseball card mess so with that being said I must warn you the scenes you're about to experience may cause trauma so keeping that in mind if your discretion is most definitely advised shall we So, it's a little bit messy right now, but at the same time, it's also more clean than it has been in a while. I started cleaning stuff up the last couple days, and that's why I wanted to shoot this video before I get this place cleaned up so you could get a final glimpse of it. Then a lot of people ask me, but let's just start going over things. So right when you walk in, you were greeted by none other than RDA, Richard Dean Anderson, this is an autographed picture of him. I think it's an 8x10. Could be wrong. I think I'm way off on that one. But it's from the pilot episode. There is a certificate of authenticity behind this photo. I picked up at a Comic-Con several years ago. And now this wall over here, I have, kind of have these walls divided up by different toy lines. And not all my figures are hanging on the wall. Kind of ran out of space. But we'll get into that here shortly. You can take a look at this 1986 Ghostbusters calendar that has people's names in there that I don't have any idea who they are and birthdays and whatnot, but it's a freaking sweet keepsake. Here is a pretty rare promotional piece for the real Ghostbusters, which is my favorite thing of all time. This was sent to me by a subscriber advertising on Fearnet when they were playing reruns of the original real Ghostbusters. And here's the RGB wall, which I've showed bits and pieces of over the years. I have not really done anything to it for quite a while, but some of my favorite figures ever are hanging on this wall. We've got some re-releases down there, the ones that were exclusive to Walmart a couple years back. They re-released the original wave, first wave of RGB figures. This is a pretty awesome piece, one of my favorites. I actually picked this one up off of the Facebook Marketplace a while back. And it's hard to see because of the lighting in here, but I mean, that would be a little bit better. See my glare, a reflection in the glare, but it's a real Ghostbusters Happy Meal marquee from McDonald's drive through This is like right around 1987, I believe, maybe 88, that they were selling Ghostbusters um, toys and Happy Meals. And these are super rare, super hard to come by. I can't imagine that that many of these uh, you know, still are out there weren't you know thrown away and discarded over the years so that's one of my favorites I got a frame for that and I think it was pretty cool but here are a good chunk of my real Ghostbusters figures from different toy lines I'm not gonna sit there and go over all of them I've made videos about you know a decent amount of these the Ecto Glow line is probably the most valuable that you'll ever come across those five right there they've gone way through the roof in price recently as you can see you kind of have to get some sort of battle stance here <laughs> just to make your way around but there's a lot of cleaning up to do we've got wax boxes in a stack 91 Bowman can never have too much 91 Bowman I have empty boxes of yak packs that I just can't bring myself to throw out for whatever reason and over here this has been designated my coughs and crooks wall and this was uh, I think that was a pull out from a comic maybe a, a two-page spread from a comic that I took and got framed which is pretty sweet and this is almost the entire cops and crooks line cops and crooks was a cartoon from 1988 it didn't last all too long it was I think there were 65 episodes but I love the cartoon as a kid I love the toy line I've made videos on these now I ran out of cases and one of the biggest pains in the world and one of my biggest pet peeves ever are vintage toy cases for carded figures because there's really only two companies that make them for things like this and both companies are just absolutely awful because they never ever restock their items so if you could look down here at this heap of trash this Louis the plumber figure which is one of the most valuable and expensive cops and crooks figures which I don't know why it's laying in a heap of junk but that needs a case and I have not been able to buy it because they're never in stock. I've, this has been going on for years now. 
So, we see a bunch of papers and stuff that need to be cleaned up. Some framed t-shirts, I got a Slimer shirt there, and just cards and cards and cards that need to be sorted. Some crash dummies. Stuff that needs to be sorted, taken to the shop, put in my PC. YouTube studio right here. It's a giant freaking mess, as you probably expected. I have two different lights I've been using for a few years now. They seem to work pretty well. So I've never really had a need to upgrade. But as you can see, I'm working on sorting things out as we speak. I'm shooting this before an auction, so that's gotta be cleaned up here real soon. And over on this wall, we have a shelf I just bought. I bought this just to take some things off the floor and get ready for upcoming videos. Like we got some naughty tops. Uh, I try to put boxes for the needle and a wax stack series on here. We have some future break boxes over here. And then down below, I have my rookie card collection. So I have two uh, three row boxes or 3,000 counts, full top loaders divided up by year. Keep those down here. And we go on to one of my other favorite toy lines of all time, the Food Fighters. This is a complete toy line. I have all 10 of them in the four variants which have gone crazy in price over the years. Some of those are $500 a piece, those bottom four. The rest of the, the 10, I mean, even those ones have gone way up. Fortunately, I started collecting toys back in about 2013 before everything went absolutely nuts and through the roof and stuff tripled and quadrupled in price. And then over here, we have the Bionic 6 wall. I completed this toy line not all that long ago, but we have all the figures here and going down the left side of this closet. Now, inside of the closet, I'm gonna be careful to show you. I'm gonna be careful where we're stepping here. But, <laughs> inside of here, we got some more real Ghostbusters figures. We have an original Ecto-1 in the box. We have the re-release Ecto-1. We got some Bionic 6 vehicles that the Mule's van is very expensive. It's hard to obtain these days. You also have some more coughs and crooks in there and some other RGB uh, novelty items. There's uh, a bunch of MacGyver toys down below, which are super rare. I have some die cast uh, metal trucks down there, retail trucks for like hills. I think I have one for far more service merchandise. There might be, I think there's a children's palace one down there. Here's some coughs and crooks vehicles, food fighters. There is the Green Ghost plushie, which is pretty freaking rare, especially to find in the box. And then up here, I'll turn this light on, I guess, but make it a lot easier. I got some more stuff hidden away back in here as well. But up here we have a loose but complete firehouse that someday I hope to put on display, not tucked away in a closet. A Stay Puff plushie, Batman the animated series, the Batmobile, and I think this is a Hills Earl truck, lunchbox. I'm not sure what that is. I think it might be real Ghostbusters, but there's a lot of stuff you really can't see that's tucked away. Some memorabilia from Greengate Mall, my favorite place of all time. So that's the inside of there. You gotta be careful where you're stepping. So making our way to the wax wall and the upstairs. Come across some more boxes. I got some random newer stuff that I just bought in bulk. Saw for good prices, decided to buy it, hang on to it. Some 2021 Bowman Mega Box. And here comes the wax wall and all kinds of other stuff. Now this, all these boxes are gonna put, be put on the shelf. I haven't done it yet, but I will hopefully sometime soon. We got some a bunch of 89s up top. I'm gonna do a video on this probably eventually, 89 Fleer cellos and wax there's an 89 upper deck box it's full 36 packs 2004 top series one blaster box with 11 packs in there it's a yachty molina rookie series and some of my better ones i feel like are down on this second shelf 92 bowman one of my favorites of all time we got 2001 bowman blaster those are really hard to find pool holes rookie 90 leaf one of my other favorite sets series one and series two those are sealed 93 bowman we have 97 Fleer Series 2. That's a David Ortiz. That's a hobby box. Not retail. 85 Donruss. 81 Fleer. So all kinds of goodies. Tops Kids. <laughs> For you Tops Kids enthusiasts, I think there's an 80... Is that 83 Donruss? 
Now that's 82 Donruss box. There's an 85 tops box, 86 tops. So just all kinds of nostalgic gold. There's the 87 leaf I just picked up recently. So it's kind of hard to navigate through here. It's, you can see there's a Billy Ripken F face card sitting there, but it is censored. This is my Beckett file cabinet right here. I've yet to put a bunch of these old issues in there. I'm going to get to that at some point. But in order to continue to do this video, we, we got to make a place to walk. So I'm going to take you upstairs into the attic, otherwise known as my shipping department. Here's some King Arthur and the Knights of Justice on this wall. Uh, it's a pretty small toy line. I completed that a while ago. And some other random stuff hanging up here. We've got a Ghostbusters random cheap plastic sign there or logo and go on upstairs there's so much to show you so i'm not going to show you at all i'm just going to give you a brief walkthrough from people that want to see but i did a pretty good job there's bars of silver laying there did a pretty good job cleaning this up so that you would be able to see as we go up the stairs we see some more random figures some more sets and a whole bunch more sets actually these are all the traded update sets and whatnot in the 80s Early 90s, novelty sets from Kmart, KB Toys, some more factory sets. There's a hair dryer in case you need to unbrick cards. This is the shipping department that most of you have never got to see. So the breaks, auctions, everything else, it is all coordinated and done in this slop of an area over here. And if I need boxes, I got a plethora of them. So, working on getting this cleaned up too. It's not as bad to walk up here. Got a little, little more uh, breathing room, I should say. But, let's give you the gist of it. So, a lot of this stuff being sorted out, organized. Need any boxes? I got you covered. So, Got a pathway through here. We got some G.I. Joe stuff. We got some wax boxes, some more empty boxes. There's a shelf that <laughs> needs to be used more so I can take some stuff off the floor. Bunch of random packs. And kicking our light on here. More stuff being sorted. And what is this? Looks like a box of G.I. Joes being guarded by none other than Chris Haslam. He is pumped on those G.I. Joes, and he knows the date of the G.I. Joe video. He's keeping that a secret. Forbidden Bridge, if you remember that game, I bought this at a yard sale a couple years ago for like a buck. So it's pretty expensive now. They're well over 100 bucks for one that's complete. And it's kind of hot in the attic up here. I don't have an AC unit because it was causing problems with moisture, so I just put a, a random old fan up here. Just to get some circular, some ventilation, I, I should say. But got a bunch of packing peanuts. I keep those and I use them pretty fre frequently when I'm shipping out wax boxes and stuff like that. They definitely do come in handy. I think I showed this in a video a while back, but this is a promo poster display from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Now this is pretty freaking awesome. I don't, I can't imagine that that many of these survived from Bounce and Comet to products being advertised. And there's still a bunch of posters in there. There's four different posters for that movie. And I haven't decided what I want to do with that yet. I thought about putting it on display in the uh, the shop, but I've yet to get that far. And here is the shopping cart graveyard. We have an Ames cart. If any of you guys remember when Ames had red shopping carts, because I don't, they're always green. And our beloved Hills shopping cart rests side by side up here. Until they can be properly displayed. We have more of a mess over here. Some VHS tapes. I had a, a VCR TV combo up here that I used to have these on loop, but kind of got overtaken by other various junk. So the last part of the upstairs, and the upstairs is tough because I'm six foot five and we have a sloped ceiling as you can see. So uh, and I and I've told this before, but I, I rent my house from my buddy. Um, eventually, I will hopefully purchase a bigger house with more space 
and can properly display a lot more stuff. But this hasn't been added to in a while. But we got a bunch of wax boxes, empty wax boxes. I keep these. I think they're cool. So I kind of collect them. And I've made a tower. And there's a lot I have to add to it. So this will be probably the whole way to the ceiling whenever I add the rest of these two there. But I've got different variations of 90 Tops boxes from Cello to Rack to Jumbo boxes to Wax. And um, that is basically about it. Some USPS boxes. And the only thing I didn't show you guys, it's going to be a first-hand view here. The only thing I have not showed you is the hand baskets. So this is what I experience firsthand. You guys can see what it takes to even go down the stairs and what you see when you walk down. So these are kind of hidden up here. These are hand baskets. We have far more, which I used to love going to farmers as a kid. They sold baseball cards. They also had video rentals, which was sick. And we have an Ames hand basket. KB Toys bag. There's some Kmart shirts inside of here. And Toys R Us. And at the bottom of the stairs, you were greeted by the giant wall of wax. So that about does it for this toy room tour. Definitely cannot be inebriated when going through here. You just would not survive. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you will not be absolutely mortified by it. But... In order to get out of here, you kind of got to take a step back to open the door and you're greeted by more stuff in the hallway. That is it for this video. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. I can only imagine. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you all very, very soon.